I've moved from Sydney to Melbourne and I'm blown away by how different the weather is here. It's weird, interesting and um, cold. To understand why Melbourne is considered one of the coldest places in Australia, we have to look at where it's located. Melbourne has an oceanic climate. These climates are hit all year round by the polar front. Oceanic climates usually have mild summers and are overcast, which is the case for Melbourne. I'm yet to see days of clear skies here. Being the most southern part of Australia, Melbourne gets hit from the Southern Ocean and Antarctic storms, which would explain why Melbourne's cold every day once the sun disappears, even outside winter months. Then there's warm air coming from the north and the west, which interact with the cold air. When cold air meets warm air, it pushes the warm air upwards and as it rises, it cools rapidly, which brings on a cold front, causing sudden drops in temperature which I think would explain why it can be a clear sky with a hot sun to overcast and cold within such a small amount of time, hence Melbourne being called the city with four seasons in a day. Melbourne has had its fair share of extreme weathers. For example, in 1918 on a 38 degree day, a tornado hit through the town of Brighton and St Kilda, killing two people, including a boy and injuring 12. The Brighton tornado had winds up to 320 kilometers, currently the highest recorded in Melbourne. Most sources state that the tornado lasted no more than 30 minutes, possibly even two to three minutes. The Yarra River starts from around Mount Borbo in the Yarra Ranges National Park. It flows for over 240 kilometers flowing into Port Phillip Bay before going through Melbourne CBD. Finding the exact starting point is something I can't manage to find, but from the Yarra River catchment, the river flows down through mountains, which is all prohibited area. In 1934, heavy rainfall that lasted for days with up to 350 millimetres hit Melbourne, causing the lower Yarra River to break its banks, turning into a raging torrent. Roads were submerged, hundreds of houses destroyed, and at least 34 people dead and over 5,000 homeless. To give you an idea of just how horrible the 1934 floods were, this is a photo taken of the Outer Railway Bridge over the Yarra River in 1900. This is the same bridge taken in 1934 when the Yarra River turned into a raging torrent. You can see the water level is absolutely insane. Now let's go back 43 years to 1891 to the Great Flood. For two days, rain hit the city and caused the Yarra River to break its banks, stretching as far as 305 metres wide, swamping the low-lying suburbs. Following the flood, thousands of people travelled by train or tram to witness the destruction this spring. The Great Flood caused around 3,000 people to become homeless and killed three. To give you an idea of how insane this flooding was, this is the Queen's Bridge today. It was built in 1889, two years before the Great Flood and crosses over the Yarra River. You can walk or drive on it and it's listed on the Victorian Heritage Registry being 135 years old. This photo shows how high the river was. Harry Houdini was a man who gained a reputation from performing stunts by escaping shackles, ropes and handcuffs. In 1910, nine years after the Great Flood, he came to Melbourne and jumped off the Queen's Bridge straight into the murky brown river with his hands tied behind his back and escaped. Nearly 20,000 people came to watch his stunt. Melbourne certainly isn't only known for its cold weather. February 8th, 1983 was Melbourne's hottest recorded February with temperatures reaching 43 degrees. 1982 to 1983 was Australia's most severe drought in the 20th century. Because of this, gale force winds bring a 320 meter high wall of dust from the west into Melbourne. It was 500 kilometers wide and 100 kilometers deep. Four domestic planes were diverted, three to Canberra and one to Sydney. The dust cloud blanketed Melbourne just before 3 p.m. and turned that 43 degree day into darkness. One of the most amazing weather phenomena to hit Melbourne, the city and suburbs were obliterated by a dust storm at three this afternoon. It came in across the bay from the west, carried by storm force winds, causing damage and a great deal of panic. The dust just swept through and watching from the top of the Channel 7 building as the front approached, the city skyline just disappeared. It was like something from the best science fiction. Melbourne was turned into an eerie city. 
The darkness was so swift that street lights came on automatically, and office blocks shone like beacons as the dust swirled around the buildings. By 4pm, the worst of the gale force winds and dust cloud was over. It's estimated that around 1,000 tonnes of dust was dumped on Melbourne and winds of up to 90 kilometres an hour bring down power lines and trees. It's estimated that the storm dumped 1,000 tonnes of dust on Melbourne. And according to a Melbourne University lecturer, Dr Tim Gibson, another 50,000 tonnes of dust passed over the city in the time it took the storm to clear the city area.